Great. So it looks looks like we're live. I'm very happy to be talking with Heidi McCann again today. How are you, Heidi? I'm doing great. Thank you. I hope you're doing great. well too. I'm doing well. And um, so we are talking six months out after you have launched your book. So you wrote um, the amazing Whatever the Future Holds book. And um, so I wanted to have you on to pick your brain about what worked, what didn't about the book launch, what the experience has been like um, for you as you are promoting your book, sharing it, sharing your story out in the world. Um, and before we dive into that, and I pick your brain on a lot of subjects, <laughs> uh, would you share a little bit about what inspired you to write your story and what it's about? Of course, yes. Um, so the book in in general is about love and loss um, and grief and healing. That's that's how I've been um, encompassing it when I've been speaking about it with people who don't know about it. But in in specifically, um, it's about a, the journey um, with me and my first husband, uh, Curtis Vance, and our our life before, during, and after. Uh, ALS. So he was uh, diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease at the age of 25 and passed away uh, a year and a day after diagnosis. Um, and we had known one another for many years beforehand. And then I was his uh, full-time caretaker during his illness. And then the book, the last third of the book goes into the process of, of grief and um, the realities of, of what you do after somebody dies. Um, and then it goes into healing. Uh, so it's, it kind of brings you through that journey. Um, and I, I, it took me 22 years after his passing to actually put it out in the world. Um, and I, I wrote it uh, for me. Um, it was a very healing journey for me. Uh, I wrote it for him because I promised him that I would. And although it took me 22 years, I did do it. Um, but did it. <laughs> <laughs> But in, in all honesty, and, and really the, the main thing was I, I wrote it to help others. Um, when, when he was sick and after he was gone, I, I looked for books. I'm a reader. Um, I'm, I'm, I was an English major for undergrad and graduate. So books, books are very important to me. And I, I looked for a book um, that, that I could relate to and that could show me and help me and to know that, that this was normal and that life would go on. Um, and there were, there were some wonderful books out there, but there wasn't the one I was looking for. And I, I'm personally not a how-to book person. I'm a story book person. So right. I wrote it, I wrote it for anybody who um, might need that book uh, in their life. And it's been remarkable to me to have ha, now have readers uh, reach out to me and share how it's helped them through different things. And that's, that was the whole, the whole purpose. So it makes me feel really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, I love that you wrote the book for you, right. That you wrote the book that you would have needed at the time that could have been helpful for you. And from that, it seems like the response from readers has been very positive from what from what I can see um, from a publishing perspective. Um, and what's it been like to hear from the readers and get that uh, back? It's it, it's been absolutely wonderful. Um, I I remember I recall in at the end of May when we first launched in that that. I mean, there was just so many feelings of, of nervousness and anxiety and scare, being scared of how are people going to react to this? Because it's a very truthful book. Um, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't hold back. I don't think, um, and that's my personality. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I was, I was, I was nervous about all of that. And th those, that's what though, that the readers appreciate, um, at least that's what I've heard the most is, you know, thank you for your honesty. Um, everything from feeling, you know, like an insecure young young girl that I was mm -hmm. and talking about that. Um, and you know, the realities of, of, of dying and the realities of, of grieving. Um, and so hearing people thank me for just being true and honest mm -hmm. has, has been wonderful. Um, 
you know, there's, there's been some, I've been very fortunate to have a, a wonderful amount of reviews, uh, both on Amazon and through Goodreads. And a lot of those are people, the majority of people, I, I don't know, I have no idea mm. who they are. And there's been a few that when I first read them, I was like, Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes with sure reviews, I, it's like, should I be reading these? <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. I really thought about that part, but, um, <laughs> Right, you know, right. again, I'm a reader and, and I know that not every book is for everybody and or everybody is going to take what they need or want from a book. And it makes me feel good that, again, as a as a English person, as a writer, it makes me feel really good that um, not everybody's getting the same thing out of it. And and people are critical of it and or, you know, seeing something in it that I wouldn't have seen. And that's that's what literature is. And so it's really, it's really exciting. <laughs> right. I, um, I say that yeah. to people when, um, if you, uh, if you get a bad review, it's actually like, oh, you made it right. It's like <laughs> people are, <laughs> you're visible enough. You're out putting yourself out there. You are get, getting that honest feedback from someone. It's actually a great sign that you're making a difference and putting yourself out there and getting your message out there. Um, so how do you have, I'm curious, and you might not know the answer to this, but how people always want to be able to get reviews. They want to get reviews of their books. And I'm curious, what um, have you seen that made a difference on that? Like, do you know where the reviews came from or any advice on that? No, oh, that's good. Um, so I would say at least at the beginning, so the first three months, um, I was putting it out there on my social media feeds. So at the beginning, I, I've always been an active Facebook user. Um, mm -hmm. And then I joined, or maybe I had an account, but I became more active on Instagram those first mm -hmm. three months, okay. um, which, which was a, a lesson to me. My children taught me, my my older <laughs> girls, <laughs> mom is just kids. On Instagram, <laughs> love kids. Um, and yeah. so when I was promoting the book just through my own individual pages, I was I was maybe to some of some people's um, view a little annoying in please, if you've read it, leave a review. Mm -hmm. So th mm -hmm. Those were people that um, knew me. I'm I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure of that. Um, and then from there, though, um, I think it's I, I mean, I, I honestly just don't know where it's coming from, except for um the other thing I did at the very beginning, probably actually the week after it launched. And again, these are things I wish I had known before that I had thought of mm -hmm. before. So yep. I realized, oh my gosh, there's all these groups. And for me, it was Facebook because that was my, my main social platform, social media platform. There's all these groups. There's these book groups. Um, you know, I'm not going to name the names, but different book club, book, book, book club groups within, within mm -hmm. Facebook. Um, some allow authors to self-promote and some mm -hmm. don't, some allow the authors to self-promote in their own, um, their own thing, or you can just comment if someone's looking for a particular book. So mm -hmm. I, I was very, very active on those pages the first three months. Um, mm -hmm. and those people, I have no idea who they are. Um, and I do know that a, a number of them purchased the book. Um, read the book. Um, some have then gone ahead and on the page talked about what they thought about the book. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that some reviews have come from there. The most, I think the most important thing um, has been word of mouth. So a friend of a friend of a friend. Um, and that's, even though the social media has been fantastic, it's the word of mouth. It's, it's you know, Susie telling Annie telling Barbara that, hey, I read this book, um, you know, you should try it. And mm -hmm. that, that's really the big, the big piece of it. I have since um, created a Twitter account um, mm -hmm. and, and a well, LinkedIn, I was always on, um, mm -hmm. but the Twitter is new and mm -hmm. I'm not very comfortable with it. I'm not really sure what I'm doing, um, but it, again, yeah. things have come through that. The, the mm -hmm. lately in the last month or so, I've been finding um, people or groups, and it's it's mainly like individual people that 
do review books. You, you don't pay them. Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and actually the few people that have gone ahead and reviewed it on their social media pages won't even allow me to gift them the book. Um, one, one particular, this was really interesting. One particular, um, person who I reached out to, and I only knew it because I saw them reviewing another book mm. on, on a feed. Um, and I reached out and said, would you be interested in reviewing my book? And, and the person said, well, yes, but I, I will only, I will purchase it if I want to. So let me look into it first. She got mm. back to me. She said, no, this looks really interesting. I'm going ahead and I'm going to go ahead and buy the ebook mm. and then mm-hmm. we'll review it. And then they made it the book of the day and they had it, they had twit, they were tweeting it all over Twitter. I had no idea what was going that's on. So cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So, that was fun. So yeah. I think that, I think the lesson learned is, um, as in most things in life, you have to be your own advocate. Um, mm-hmm. you have to toot your own horn. You have to say, this is out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and without that, it's, it's, it's just not going to happen. Um, at least at the beginning, um, what I'm, what I'm continuing to learn and understand are I'm trying to find influencers within these social media, um, pages and, and who can be my influencer because they do like the book, but they also know so many more people than I do. Um, I haven't conquered that at all, but I'm, I'm looking into it and starting to figure it out a little bit. So that's mm-hmm. been interesting. Very cool. And I, so before we um, started the official interview and we we're chit-chatting before, we were talking about how books really have a life of their own and we don't know where it's going to go to, but um, we need to do that, that kind of legwork first. And I love, and I think that that's why your book has been able to grow in the way that it has. And, and we're only six months out, so we don't know what's going to happen next. But the, to be, because you did initially, right, yeah. do that legwork, be your own advocate, find out some places that you could place on social media, different places, and then follow the, like, follow um, the trail, follow the trail, follow <laughs> the breadcrumbs, as they say, to what's next, right? It's like, that's how you yeah. found someone that would review your book, because they were interested in it, that right? Like you find these different people along the way and different opportunities along the way, but you don't know at the beginning exactly what that will be. We have some ideas. And because of that, yes, we, we have the reviews from people we know. That's how we start. (laughs) Yes. And then that grows to a lot of people we don't know. And we're like, who are these people? Where'd they come from? It's such, it feels very, can feel very cool and magical. And, um, on the other side of that, um, so we talked about social media, how you're utilizing that, um, in-person events. So oh. you told me you've, you've done a bit of that too. Can you share about what those have been like? Yes, they, they have been absolutely wonderful. Um, so my first one was up in Vermont um, at, at Joe's Pond. Literally, it was right out, right by the pond. Um, and that is where uh, my family has a cottage and and where I was living when I met Curtis so many, so many years ago. Um, And that was just absolutely beautiful. Um, I knew all the people that were there. They were, many of them had been on the journey with us when Curtis was sick. So it was, it just meant so much uh, to me. And what was, what was wonderful about that event, uh, two things. One was I, they asked me to do a reading. Um, So I read a couple of, um, a couple of pieces of the book that meant a lot to me. And that were significant for the area of Joe's Pond um, and West Danville, Vermont. But what was also wonderful and surprising was even all these people who knew me, they had questions. They had, um, there were just some amazing discussions that came out or the discussion was amazing. We, we sat there for far too long. Um, not, it, it wasn't, we could have been there forever, but it, it was just, um, everyone was like, wait a minute, we have somewhere to go. And I actually had <laughs> the second sign right. of the day to go to. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, but that was, it, again, as a writer, it, it was so validating because um, they were interested. They were interested in, in, in the writing they were interested in why did you do it this way? And did you ever think about doing it this way? And the process um, and, and all of that, which was really remarkable. Um, the other thing was they all had copies of the book, but I sold about you know 50 books between that signing and then the signing in the afternoon, which was up at um, Curtis's family's 
um, Apple Orchard and Lodge. And, but, and they were buying books for their family and their friends. And that was amazing to me um, that it meant that much to them, or it made, it made some sort of impact on their life that they would want to share and not their copy, but they wanted to buy another copy for another person. And as a, as a first time published author, I mean, that was huge. I was on cloud nine after that day. Um, and then, like I said, we had a signing up at, at Curtis's uh, family's uh, lodge and log cabin and, and apple orchard, which was that, that was just, um, extremely meaningful. And, and it was hard for me to keep myself together. I did not speak at that one. Um, I couldn't, there was no way, uh, there was just no way I would have been able to, but I felt Kurt the whole time. And it was, it was wonderful. Um, and then I recently, I did a, uh, I was invited to, uh, be as part of a book club discussion, um, at a country club down in Greenwich, Connecticut, a good friend of mine uh, lives down there and, um, was a part of this book club. And so she recommended the book to the director of the book club. And that was, so I didn't know anybody at the table except for my one friend. They had all read the book. Um, I was, Liz, as I was sharing with you earlier, one of the gentlemen um, had, was looking for me on a, on a video on YouTube or something because they wanted, he wanted to see how I spoke and who I was before attending the event. So that was really interesting to learn. Um, but that was incredible. Two things were incredible. One was the questions um, that, that came out of that discussion. Um, and the second was, they all asked me when I was writing my next book. <laughs> that, was, that, that was interesting. And then the most interesting was I said, well, what would you want me to write about? And the answer was a sequel. And I said, a sequel? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> um, but but be, being in person mm -hmm. and, and talking with people about mm. one thing that I've written was, was remarkable. Um, and I will be doing a webinar two weeks from yesterday um, for an ALS organization called Everything ALS. So that's fantastic. Um, that will be over over Zoom. It's all virtual. Um, but that'll be my first experience um, speaking, but not necessarily seeing who I'm speaking to. And, and it will be virtual. So that'll be an experience for sure. Mm, that's amazing. And it, so I am curious about, because it's a very sensitive book, right? Very emotional. I know we're 20 years out, but it's still very emotional. What is it? First of all, I just, I want to acknowledge you for being willing to speak to people and to on this, right? Because I can imagine that being very hard to face. And um, so thank you for doing that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so any other, uh, so most of the book sales that you've had are, you would say primarily online, right? Yes. Through, yeah. Yes. And directly through, do you sell them through a website or, or you sell them directly through Amazon, right? You're pointing people to Amazon. Uh, correct. So yes. So at the yep. beginning, it was all, through, it's ju it was just on Amazon. And then, um, hmm, what are we December now? I think it was October, end of October. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I, we went ahead and put it on Ingram Spark. So, <laughs> okay. so now it is on barnesandnoble.com. Um, I clicked the button for it to go on target.com. I haven't seen it on there yet. I'm not sure okay. if they choose to pick it up or not pick it up. I'm not really sure how that works 100%, okay. but it mm -hmm. might be on there eventually or at some point. Um, okay. And then for me, the interesting part, and again, I'm learning about this too, but libraries, um, so what, from what I'm understanding, once it's on, once it's through Ingram, a library can and will. Yes. Pick it. So I've been to my local library and requested that right. they, that they could carry it. Um, and we'll continue to do that with other libraries, but that's, that's been a, a definite experience, um, learning, just learning how that all works. Right. Oh, that's exciting. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, in order to, uh, one step I would like to take that I haven't done mm -hmm. is um, a website of my own and then have links mm -hmm. on there, but I haven't, haven't gotten there yet. 
Mm -hmm. There's only so there's a lot of different pieces <laughs> that you can do and let, get to choose one at a time, which ones we take on and, and handle. Right. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to make sure I asked you. Um, Amazon ads, you said you dabbled a little bit in those. Did, were yes. those worth it or not? Or what do you think? Um, at least the way I've done it. Now, I, I will preface it by saying for sure, I'm, I haven't done all the research and read what I probably should have read. And, and the recommendations have been wonderful. Here's a great book, you know, to read, mm -hmm. to understand how it really works. And I haven't done that, like that research and that labor. Um, from what I have done, what I think is wonderful is I know it's getting noticed. People are clicking on it. That's, that hasn't been the issue. Um, mm -hmm. great. But I think in general, I've sold... I don't know, maybe four books um, through those ads. And if you're looking at a true cost benefit, there is no cost benefit. I mean, I've spent way more than I've sold. Um, okay. So from that perspective, um, if, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. a little tricky, um, mm -hmm. but, yeah. oh, sorry. Like, They're going outside. My one of my dogs came <laughs> home from school, and the dogs are happy oh. to see her. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I have I have dabbled. Um, I, mm -hmm. I I know what I need to do is if I'm going to seriously move forward with that, uh, really understand what I'm doing and and how to how to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so anything else around? Oh, so I want to know numbers because people are curious. They want to go, how many books will I sell? What's an average? And I never know what I say. I don't know what an average is. So I'd like yeah. to just ask, you know, how many? So you said you sold 50 books at that event, that in-person event. What's online? What do online sales look like for you? Um, right, right now, right around 1,300. Um, and that is inclusive of um, the free KU downloads that happened at the very beginning. Okay. Um, I, I don't have a breakdown exactly of how many physical books versus eBooks versus the KU. I will okay. say that I love the platform of KDP in terms of you can uh, you can see how many pages of those Kindle Unlimited books have been read. Um, and is that wild? Know. That blows oh, my it's... mind that you could be like someone read this many pages of my book today. It's kind of yes. Right. Yes. And then you're like, wait a minute, they put it down at page 49. Is that one person at 49? Or, you know, and you, you start to make yourself a little crazy thinking about yeah. um, the specifics, but no, but that's been, um, that's really, so I don't know the exact number of actual pages mm -hmm. read, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot. I do know it's a lot, which is, which is great um, yeah. that, that people are, are definitely reading it um, th that's through wonderful. that Kindle Unlimited, which for me, mm -hmm. I think has been terrific. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. Anything else that you want to talk about as far as the experience, any advice for authors as they're going out to launch their books, anything? I would say if I were to um, do it again, or if I ever do write a second book, um, I definitely, and and I it wouldn't, it, it, it was meant to be this way because I was new, I was new at it. Um, but kind of, understanding if you're going to go the social media way, you know, making sure that your pages are set up. So I, I've continued on with my own personal Facebook page and kind of a personal Instagram page, but I may have created an author page and, and then, you know, use that account solely for um, promoting the book uh, and or mm -hmm. all of the different groups that I've discovered through Facebook. I may have inserted myself into those a few months before the book launch versus mm -hmm. a week or two after the book launch. Um, Great advice. So, yeah, a little bit of, of uh, pre- uh, you know, being, being ready a little bit earlier, but again, I, that's not my personality. I learn on the fly. That's how I roll. So you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not surprised at myself at all. Right. Um, and probably the other, the other big thing is, um, you know, it, especially in my situation where I ha I was thinking about this book for 22 years, literally thinking about it for 22 years. And then it finally got out and I wanted to just be like, whew, I'm done. The marketing and the post-publishing world, in, in my experience, is just as emotionally up and down as the preparing the book to get out was. Um, and I think authors should know that, that it's you still have those moments of elation and you have those moments of, oh, did I make a mistake or, you know, th those sorts of things. And, and to know that that's okay and that's to be expected. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it's a journey like everything else. And it, it's really, it's just been so exciting. Mm. Thank you so much, Heidi. I've learned so much. I know our listeners will learn so much from your experience. And um, I'm so excited to see what what unfolds next with this. Because, And I, I want to acknowledge you for keep showing up for it, right? Because sometimes people, once the, like you said, once the book is up, it's like, I'm done, right? And we do need yes. breathers. We need breaks because there's a lot that goes into getting the book to print, right? With edits and everything. Um, yes. and with the launch, it's, oh, we get it out there and then, oh, but I want to acknowledge you for keeping going to picking it back up and, and doing that work so that more people could benefit from your story and learn. From oh, well, thank you. And I think that that comes from, and, and I think every author probably feels this way. I believe in it. I believe in its message. Um, and when you believe in a message, or at least for me, what I believe in this message and I want it, I want as many people to hear it as, as want to hear it, right? It's not for everybody. No book is for everybody, but for those that this book is for, I want it to reach them. Um, and, and I, I don't want to end this without thanking you, Liz, um, and your entire team. And this never would have happened without you guys. Again, 22 years of sitting down this project. Um, but then I met you and I knew Audra and the rest of your amazing team. And it was, um, you guys have just been absolutely terrific. So thank, thank you, you, Heidi. That means a lot. Thank you for saying that. Um, so yeah, so the book again for people is Whatever the Future Holds by Heidi McCann. And thank you so much for talking with us today, Heidi. Thank you, Liz. Take care. Take care. Bye.